You are a slave to the Roman Empire since your birth. Your birth certificate is a contract with Rome, which basically declares you dead and lost is sea. We will dig into the history of these trusts that was created back in the 13th century and has enslaved all humanity on the earth ever since. Unum Sanctum is one of the most frightening documents of history, and the most quoted is the primary document of the popes claiming the global power. In 1302 Pope Boniface issued his infamous papal bull Unum Sanctum, the first express trust. He claimed control over the whole planet which made him king of the world. Furthermore, we declare, we proclaim, we define that it is absolutely necessary for salvation that every human creature be subject to the Roman pontiff. Unum Sanctum, His Holiness Pope Boniface VIII, November 18, 1302. It is not only the first trust deed in history, but also the largest trust ever conceived, as it claims the whole planet and everything on it, conveyed in trust. In celebration of the trust, he commissioned a gold-plated headdress in the shape of a pinecone, with an elaborate crown at its base. The pinecone is an ancient symbol of fertility and one traditionally associated with Baal, as well as the cult of Cybele. It also represents the pineal gland in the center of our brains. Crystalline in nature, which allows us access to source, hence the 13-foot-tall pinecone in Vatican Square. Pope Boniface VIII was the first leader in history to create the concept of a trust, but the first testamentary trust, through a deed and will creating a deceased estate, was created by Pope Nicholas V in 1455, through the papal bull Romanus Pontifex. This is only one of three papal bulls to include the line with the incipit, for a perpetual remembrance. This bull had the effect of conveying the right of use of the land, as real property, from the express trust unum sanctum, to the control of the pontiff and his successes in perpetuity. Hence, all land is claimed as crown land. This first crown is represented by the first Sestui Qvi trust, created when a child is born. It deprives us of all beneficial entitlements and rights on the land. The second crown was created in 1481 with the papal bull Aeterni Regis, meaning eternal crown, by Sixtus IV, being only the second of three papal bulls as deeds of testamentary trusts. This papal bull created the crown of Aragon, later known as the crown of Spain, and is the highest sovereign and highest steward of all Roman slaves subject to the rule of the Roman pontiff. Spain lost the crown in 1604 when it was granted to King James I of England, by Pope Paul V, after the successful passage of the Union of Crowns, or Commonwealth, in 1605 after the false flag operation of the gunpowder plot. The crown was finally lost by England in 1975, when it was returned to Spain and King Carlos I, where it remains to this day. This second crown is represented by the second Sestui Qvi Trust, created when a child is born, and by the sale of the birth certificate as a bond to the private central bank of the nation, depriving us of ownership of our flesh and condemning us to perpetual servitude, as a Roman person or slave. The third crown was created in 1537 by Paul III, through the Papal Bull Convocation, also meant to open the Council of Trent. It is the third and final testamentary deed and will of a testamentary trust, set up for the claiming of all lost souls lost to the sea. The Venetians assisted in the creation of the first Sestui Qvi Act of 1540, to use this Papal Bull as the basis of ecclesiastical authority of Henry VIII. This crown was secretly granted to England in the collection and reaping of lost souls. The crown was lost in 1816, due to the deliberate bankruptcy of England, and granted to the Temple Bar which became known as the Crown Bar, or simply the Crown. This third crown is represented by the third Sestui Qvi Trust, created when a child is baptized. It is the parent's grant of the baptismal certificate, title to the soul, to the church or registrar. Thus, without legal title over one's own soul, we will be denied legal standing and will be treated as things. Cargo without souls, upon which the bar is now legally able to enforce maritime law. A Sestui Qvi Trust is a fictional concept. It is a temporary testamentary trust, first created during the reign of Henry VIII of England through the Sestui Qvi Act of 1540 and updated by Charles II, through the CQV Act of 1666, wherein an estate may be affected for the benefit of a person presumed lost or abandoned at sea, and therefore assumed dead. Each Sestui Qvi trust, created since 1933, represents one of the three crowns representing the three claims of property of the Roman cult, real property, on earth, personal property, body, and ecclesiastical property, soul. Each corresponds exactly to the three forms of law available to the gala of the bar courts. 1. Corporate commercial law. Where the judge are the landlord. 2. Maritime and canon law. Where the judge is the banker. 3. The Talmudic law. Where the judge is the priest. So, while it might be difficult for some to completely understand the meaning of the Sestui Qvi Trust. What I have presented here are the history of how it was made. I have found a video that explains how this basically works, by them creating a straw man of yourself, based on your birth certificate, which is nothing but a slave contract with the Vatican. Ah, the government. It loves you and wants to keep you safe and well. It even wants to make paying taxes, fines, and court costs easier for you. How? Well, you'll need to meet your straw man. He was born the same day you were. He looks like you, has the same name, and lives in your house, but you never knew he existed. You will have even paid his parking tickets or taxes. The worst part? He's been dead from day one. From every birth certificate, a legal personality, or legal fiction, is created with the same name to confuse little old you into thinking it's you. So, there is a human you and a paper you, or as it's commonly known, a straw man. 
So when it seems like government officials, court clerks, or the police are speaking English, they aren't. They're speaking legalese, designed to make you agree to verbal and written contracts without even knowing about it, all spun from Black's Law Dictionary. For example, when the police say, do you understand, you'll say, yes. What they are really saying is, do you stand under our authority? Oopsie daisy, you just created a verbal contract with them. Oh, you clever government. Did you know that whenever you register something, you are handing over title to the person you register it with? That's right. Whenever you register something with the government, they assume it belongs to them. Registered your car? Super! Now you are the registered keeper of your vehicle, and the government can crush it when you don't pay your, ahem, <clears throat> straw man's taxes. Expecting a new bundle of joy? Well then you need to register your little darling with a birth certificate. Then they can start the process all over again and create a new straw man for your little one. Isn't that great? So when Junior grows up, he'll be able to generate revenue just like you have. When you notify on your baby by signing the birth certificate, your child becomes a ward of state. And if the government doesn't like what you're doing, they'll assume it's okay to take the child away or make new rules for things they don't like. Not enough school? Snapping your child? Shouting too loudly? Then it's off to social services for the little one. When you get a bill, it's sent to you but belongs to your straw man, not you. That's why bills, fines, and summons start with Mr., Mrs., or Ms. Sometimes you'll see your surname in capitals, just like on a gravestone. That's because your straw man is dead and just a silly piece of paper, created before you could comprehend or even consent to it. When you go to court, you represent your straw man, so you, the human, take on any costs, fees, taxes, and fines involved for the straw man. The human you doesn't even need to pay them. But you made a contract with the court by appearing on behalf of your legal personality or straw man. Just like the government knew you would. Confused? <laughs> well, don't worry. The government doesn't want you to know anyway. If you knew, you'd stop paying things like council tax and parking tickets. Because when you go to court, you are representing your straw man. You are you, alive and made of flesh and blood. Your straw man or legal personality is a piece of paper created from your birth certificate. And you think it's you. What a silly Billy.